how that is reflective of God's love. So we have to sort of step away now from all of the times that we use love in an earthly and worldly kind of context. And we, we, we talk about this quite often. Uh, you know, we step away from, man, I love McDonald's food, or man, I love my Harley, or man, I love church. We step away and out of that, and we step into, a, we step into the very nature of God and what it means to love. I just had that question this morning. We're going to address that. What does God's love look like was the essence of the question. So let's read this and we'll see. Very different um, teachings. Very, you know, John, Holy Spirit through John comes at this and, and, and shows us the very nature of love in many different ways with one solid bottom line. One solid bedrock upon which we can stand. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, this is an old one you have heard from the very beginning. This old commandment, to love one another, is the same message you heard before. Yet it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment, and you also are living it. For the darkness is disappearing, and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims I am living in the light, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves another brother or sister is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates another brother or sister is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. There are two things that I really want to draw out of here. The first is this idea of God's light. When John is speaking of love, he is speaking of light. And when he is speaking of hate, he is speaking of darkness. And that's nothing new to us here. But we must, again, break free of the way that we sort of understand light. He's not talking about incandescent lights. He's not talking about the sun. He's not even talking about walking out in the beauty of a, of a wonderful, warm spring or summer morning filled with light. He's not talking about a beautiful sunrise. There's something other, something wholly different about this light that we talk about, this light of love, this light of God that shines in a dark world. We use that imagery all the time. And I, I can't sit here and say, this is exactly what it means. But I think as Christians, we are meant to explore what it means. Because I think it means some of the same things for all of us. God is love. And we're taught through scripture how to demonstrate that love. But it also means something a little bit different for each and every one of us. As we move through our families, the good things, the bad things, the really amazing things, the really tragic things. For each one of us also, it looks a little different as to what it means to be that light. We had this conversation before as well. How do I love somebody who has been horrible to me? Well, being a light to that person is going to look a lot different than being a light to somebody who has walked with you. And, you know, and you guys have been partners and with the armor of God, all those things. So it's going to be different. But the bottom line is it's not your light. That's right. And this was brought to me because I was in one of those moods a few months ago. Um, I remember going to a, 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 a commission meeting. You know, and, and it's, it was a fairly intense couple of months there for us here in the church, as we to say the least. And for me as well, I was at this commission meeting and I was feeling like, I don't want to be here. I feel really drained anyway. Like I can't, I don't want to do this. I don't really want to do anything anymore. I just want to, you know, jump on the bike and go and get out. And the devotion that morning was from a fellow pastor named Rachel. And she, she, she preached from Revelation and she reminded us that we are not the light. We are the lampstand. And I thought, that is a, that I need to hang on to that. We are the lampstand. We're not the light. 
right? And, and, and that just brought me back to, okay, and then stop trying to do everything because God's not asking you to. And so, okay, good. And, and that really reset. And so when we look at this darkness and light and the light of the world shining in the darkness, it is the light of love. It is the light of forgiveness. It is the light of grace. It is the light of salvation. It is the light of benevolence and being kind. It is the light of all of these attributes that we can give to a God who loves us so much that he himself would become incarnate just for the purpose of being tortured and murdered on our behalf. You say, whoa, yeah, whoa. So what does that light mean to you? And I just want to reinforce, thank you, Rachel, that we're the lampstands of that light. The very minute we go around beating our chest, look at me. I am the Christian with all of the light. Look at me. I am the ultimate submitted Christian and I am the light. Oh, you really missed it. You really missed it. I'm glad you sort of understand a few things. Now let's get inside there and let's start making sense out of what you think you understand. Because you're the lampstand, brother. You're the lampstand, sister. And you and you and, and let God's light shines through you in I don't know how many folks are here today, 60, 60 different ways, yet all, as we learn again from Scripture, from the exact same source. That's a beautiful thing. It's so complex, yet it's so simple. It's so diverse, yet it is so basic. John, on several occasions in his epistles and in his, his gospels, as we will see, sums it up in three words, and you know what they are. God is love. So you take three words home with you today, and you, I guarantee you will spend the rest of your Christian life working those three words out. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? It's like a foot wide and ten miles deep. It's so cool. And that's what we want to explore today. Would you stand as you're able? We're going to sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
move on to 1 John chapter 3. <clears throat> and the first thing I want to take note is this is the, the, the second time that we've read, this is the message you have heard from the beginning. And, and you know me and my teaching and my preaching is, uh, is holistically biblical, right? There's no, there, he's trying to tell you that this is the creator of the universe. This is the God of Genesis. This is the God of Deuteronomy. This is the God of the old uh, the scriptures, the law and the prophets, as they say. This is the message you've heard from the beginning. There's nothing new. It's just that upon this lampstand, God brought his light into the world, Jesus Christ. So this is the message that you've heard from the beginning. It's not a new religion. This is not a new God come down from, what is that mountain? Olympus or whatever. You know, this is not, this is, this is God. This is Yahweh. This is the Most High. So this is the message you've heard from the beginning in the Law and the Prophets, my brothers and my sisters. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers, if the world hates you. We, we can stop right here because there's so much that happens. And there's so much happening in the modern pop Christian church today. Where, where, where people and performers and, all, they, and pastors and preachers want to be liked and they want to be adored and they want to sell records and they want to become more famous. And so they compromise on every piece of God's word that they possibly can compromise on for the sake of maintaining popularity. Now we're talking about that in America here and, and, and being anti-Christian within the church for the sake of our own egos and popularity around the world, my brothers and sisters, people are being killed when they crack open their Bible in the middle of the night and try to teach from God's word. So these words from 2,000 years ago ring true, again, in our context and in many other contexts. The word of God is powerful. I always say, you know, whenever I teach leadership, the young people are old, I say you can always tell a good leader because people love them or hate them. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You know that. You know? Some of them. Yeah. And some both. And some there's nothing, you know. But you can always tell a good leader because people, there's no, there's, oh, I'll take him or leave him, what, take it or leave or whatever, it doesn't matter. But you're not leading. If it doesn't matter what you do or what you say, then it, right? So Jesus Christ, when we take that to the nth extreme, we're talking about Jesus Christ and the holy word of God and his holy church on earth. Yeah, people are, Love or hate? And we see that, of course. Okay. So, so, because here's the thing. This was actually the second thing from the first reading I want to bring up. Notice that John is speaking into the church. He's talking about how this light of love shines within the church first. Before it emanates out into the dark and dying and dead world. He's speaking to us. And so, you know, we understand if you can't love your Christian brother and sister, if you can't, by, the, by God's grace and your understanding of God's grace that has been in you, forgive others within the very context of the church, what chance do you have of going out and loving somebody who more than often than not turns against you and hates you anyway. You don't have much. So he's speaking into the body of Christ. And, and again, so let's read on him. If we love our Christian brothers and sisters, it proves that we have passed from death into life. Reborn, Spirit of God, born of Spirit, all of those things that we know that happens when we say, yes, Lord, I am yours, I'm submitted to yours. We are born again. The Spirit of God is within us. 
and the light of God's love begins to shine through us in whatever capacity he has us at right there and then. And at first, at first, the very first people to whom it may shine are your Christian brothers and sisters, those who have experienced the same thing that you have. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. You know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. Ooh. Love or, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's the middle ground on this, folks? There's, there's, not a, there's no middle ground with his leadership. <laughs> Say, yep, light, love, eternal life. Darkness, death, murder, condemnation, damnation. Where's the middle ground? I'm going to cruise through and get on heaven on my own. Nope. Well, I'm a nice guy, so yeah. Hell is lined with nice guys. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us, so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? You will know them by their fruit. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. Thank heavens for that. So there are some things happening here to, to pay careful attention to. There is life. And there is life in that light. And there is life in the love. And there is life that is brought first to the body of Christ. He is our head. We are his body. Right? This is the lampstand. We are the little lampstands. And he brings his light in. And it's meant to come in and go through into the rest of the world. But if this isn't healthy and we aren't submitted as individuals and we choose not to be submitted as a body, then all bets are off. Because it's not our light. It's not your pastor's light. It's not your worship leader's light. It's not your super prayer's light. It's not your what, it doesn't matter. It's not our light. And we, I as an individual, am useless to the kingdom of God if I don't recognize that. And we as a church are useless to the kingdom of God if we make it about church, or make it about us, or make it about music, or make it about anything but the light of the love of God. And saying, okay, here we are. We're, we're on that foundation. What now? It's not us saying, hey, God, I have some good ideas. Try to keep up. I read a book in church growth, Lord. Now, come on, bless me. It's okay. We've made, a, we've made this covenant to love one another with God's love. Okay. Now what? But, 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 but. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. But that's, let your will, let your will be done on earth. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Like, where's the middle ground on that, folks? Your will. Except no, but no. Whew. God's love, see? See the simplicity and the complexity? You see the, the utter power. The utter power, yet the utter vulnerability. It's amazing. God is love. Or just three words. Again, bring them in. <laughs> bring them in and work them out. Uh, it, it, who you are the lampstand that you have been made to be. It's amazing. It's amazing stuff. There is life in you when there is light in you. There is death in you when there is darkness in you. There is no gray area. Truth. 
Would you stand again? Angels, we have heard on high. Let's celebrate. salvation. The church is gathered first and foremost for believers. It is supposed to be an evangelical body to be sure. But as you as God's lamp stands, if we may continue that theme throughout the morning, leave this place, you become his evangels. You become, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, Jesus, 
and his hands and feet and eyes on earth. So it is important that God's people gather under his teaching by the power of his Holy Spirit so we're not sharing a dim light or we're not sharing no light. I, I, I hear all the time about telling people about Jesus and we want to, I'm on fire and I want to tell people about Jesus and in churches that are on fire and we're going to tell people about Jesus and you know what I'm going to say next because you've heard me say it. Well, what are you saying about him? Because it's really important what you say about him. There's a slide up there from Tozer that says the devil is, the better, is a better theologian than all of us yet he is still a devil. Bless you. And so we come together for the purpose of understanding what to say, <laughs> how to tell people about Jesus, how to answer questions when they're asked to you. Let me read this because he's going to say everything that we're talking about, he says, is contingent upon if this is true. Jesus as the Christ that died for our sins. Let's read this. First John 4. <clears throat> Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For, say it with me, God, God is love. Right? So it's simple, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> God is love. Oh, I got it. I'm, I'm out the door and I'm good to go. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, okay. <laughs> you know? God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. <clears throat> this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. While we were still rebels, your, your, your mind goes to places in Scripture that talk about how his creation is in opposition to him, yet he says, no, that's, I'm coming. Right. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. So you want to get a glimpse of God? Sit down and have breakfast with a Christian brother or sister. You, if, you need, if there's somebody that needs a glimpse of God, then you sit and you pray and say, Lord, this next conversation is yours, Lord. And let them see him. Right? And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and have God living in them and they live in God. We know how much God loves us. And we have put our trust in his love. I'm going to stop there before the very last reading because the, the question that I was asked this morning really set the tone for how I am preaching right now. And the question was just a profound question that we as Christians must be prepared to answer. If God loves us and God died on the cross for us, then why, and for our sins, then why do people still go to hell? Because God's definition of love and our definition of love are different. The first way that I would address that is we would always approach that from our selfish point of view, like we talked about the other week. If I were omnipotent, this is what I would do. But we have to understand that when we say those sorts of things and think those sorts of things, we're thinking in our own selfish nature. I would save all the people that I love. There's seven billion other folks. Would, like, 
Do you see the big picture? No, if I had all the power, I would. Okay, so that's the first point, is that we'll always approach questions like that from our very narrow point of view and from our very selfish nature. There are people sitting here today that I would love to heal. That I would, and there are, there are people that I know right now and that I would just love to restore one of them, you know. Okay. So if I could, that's what I'm saying when I ask questions like that. If I could, I would. Point two is that love is pure. And the purest form of love that we as human beings can give is love of our own free will. I've said this before, I've been saying this, like if you grab your child in the morning and you shake them and you say, tell me you love me, tell me you love me, tell me you love me, and I love you, I love you, that's not love, Amen. right, that's coercion, that's force, that's fear. They've said the words, but there's not a drip of love in their heart. The best that we can do in any situation, and this is where love gets so scary, you know, we know this even here on earth, right? It's because you put yourself out there. You say, this is who I am. And that other person says, oh, I like who you are. I choose to love you. That's, you know, that's a tightrope, right? I mean, that's like, ah! That's what we're talking about, trust. And trusting another per trusting to be that vulnerable. So, we see God's love demonstrated because he's died on the cross and those who will believe that this happened and those who will put their trust in this, those who choose to love God now, receive salvation. And the, and the premise of that is that it is done of your own free will. You don't see a big prize up there and you want it. And you don't feel threatened by God being hateful and saying, if you don't love me, I'll throw you in hell. No. He says, here's all the information you need to make a decision. Here it is. I don't have my Bible's up there. Here it is. What say you? Yes, Lord, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I give myself over to this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th th those are the things that we, we need to understand and when we talk about God's love and sacrifice, God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Remember I said it's the, the best that we can do here is this free will decision. That's certainly not pure love, but it's the best that we've got. So we will not be afraid of the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Right? So you're kind of hopefully getting the point here of what John is trying to bring across. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Like I said, it's not because I see a great prize and I selfishly want it, heaven. And it's not because I fear. It's not because God is Thor the thunder God holding a hammer over my head saying, love me or else. He simply says, here's the way this creation was made. Here are the choices that you have. Here is who I am. What do you think? And when we say, yes, Lord, of my own free will, I choose you. It's a powerful thing. That's a powerful thing. We love each other because... He loved us first. So there's a lot there, and we're going to go into chapter 5 here as we light the candle. But um, I got to share, uh, because my brother Rich is going to come up here and, and share special music with us. Uh, and there's just a little bit of a chuckle here, because I said, welcome to life in a small church. <laughs> and I, I, I just told the story this morning. I remember teaching at Carlisle Christian Academy, and, and I remember... 
uh, them knowing that I was a coach before and basically hinting around, have you ever, you know, seen a soccer match before? You know, yeah, I've, I've watched like the World Cup. Do you think you could coach our team? You know, like that's life in a small school. Uh, so Sunday, Rich blessed us during the hymn sing with this amazing song. And I said, would you mind singing this sometime during Advent? And uh, he said, no, that would be okay. And of course, then Monday, Marge says, I can't come, I can't be in church on Sunday. And I'm like, hey, Rich, <laughs> you know how yesterday you said that you wouldn't mind singing it? <laughs> how about this week? So he was amazingly gracious. And he's going to bless us with this song. And then come join me here for our final reading as we light the Advent candle. Rich, thank you.
John, I certainly would encourage you. Um, stand, sit, whatever. Um, I certainly would encourage you to go into 1 John. And when you go into 1 well, John, 2 John, 3, you can go into all of them. And then, and then and, and as he brings up these ideas that were brought forth in the gospel that he wrote, go back and check there as well. And how he, how, how Holy Spirit through John weaves this teaching of light and dark, of, of good and evil, of salvation and damnation. And how he does that so brilliantly throughout all of the different areas of our lives. And how he reinforces the teaching that we are only the lampstands. And we need to remember that. When you're in any form of, of leadership like this, I've got to remember that. And as you leave this sanctuary and the Lord is asking you, whatever, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, whichever, whatever context you may be in, whatever conversation you're going to have next, remember that you are the lampstand. And, and so you're confronted with this and you're like, I can't do this. He's not asking you to do that. He's asking you to be there and to be submitted to him. And, and I know that that's difficult for us. It's like that love issue. Like we, wanna, we want to take that over. So that's sort of my encouragement for today. We're going to finish with 1 John 5. Beginning with 1. Boom. There we go. No. 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 Did you, uh, I think Justice may have fallen asleep. Oh, did I? oh, no, no, I don't have that up there, Justice. That's my fault. I apologize. Yeah, next I may be in trouble. <laughs> you see, my son? Arms are as big as my thighs. I better go apologize to him. All right, here we go. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. Church. Brothers and sisters in Christ, adopted sons or daughters of Yahweh, the Most High God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. So we can't escape that. You're, we're, we have to love each other. So look around right now and say, all right, I can do this. No. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It goes back to the free will question. Only those who choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross. Not by water only, not by water and blood, but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that his tes this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. And this is what God has testified. All of that. Right? You ready? Here we go. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. Right? All the complexities, yet that simple bottom line that I love so much. All that have the Son have life. Light. Love. And all that do not have the Son do not. We gather here today, we've talk, spoken of hope, today we're speaking of love. We're going to sing this song, When He Came. We're going to open with the hope uh, chorus, it's going to be up there, and then we're going to move on to the love chorus, right?
And as we do that, my brother Rich is going to uh, light the candles for us, the candle of hope and the candle of love. Would you stand as you're able, please? And these lyrics will be up there. together and then what do we do we take the light out to the world well that's what this last hymn is about so enjoy it sing loud it's one of my uh, favorites to play and sing as well now I have to the way that I learned this because this always messes people up and I apologize in advance at the end of the verse when it says like uh, behold throughout the heavens there's shown a holy light didn't 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 go to see I take that little space there so just hang on and wait a second for me, because I can't, I, you know me, I can't unlearn it. So I'm going to be doing that even if you charge ahead into the back, uh, because I, I'm just, I'm simple like that, so the way it is. Watch it. 
thank you so much for who you are and what you have done. Thank you for the love that shines in this world through us, through your little lampstand standing here right now. We will submit to you, Father God, so your will can be done as we pray on earth as it is in heaven. As individuals and as a church, we give ourselves over to that. What's next, Lord? Let us be what you would have us be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Woo, that was fun. We'll see you guys back in just a short while. I have a new bell to ring today. Thank you. Bonnie. We'll be ringing the new bell. <laughs>